Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. And uh, I'm still covering the whole of the Easter event, the things that led up to it, his passion, his, his trial, his crucifixion, and his resurrection, death and resurrection. And this morning, I would, I would like to capture my thoughts, reasons for betrayal, reasons for betrayal. I'm looking at, at Judas and uh, the, the whole thing. You know, Judas is an enigma to me. And I always say to myself, this guy is really, really, really very strong and independent-minded. And I'm wondering, why would Judas do such a, a, I mean, a dastardly act? A dastardly act. I mean, why, why, would, why, why would Judas be a beast and go ahead? And even though Jesus had warned that someone is going to betray me, why would he do that? He doesn't care what people think. He still went ahead and did it. Now that is, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's very sinister to me. But then I like to, uh, what was he thinking? And what, what was driving him to do that? And sometimes what drives people to do what they do, especially in terms of betrayal, which is a fact of life, then something just kicked in. Do you remember, number one, now Judas is called J Judas Iscariot. So he's from the town called Iscaria. And Iscaria was one of the hotbeds of Jewish nationalism, those who detested the, the, the rule of the Romans. Now, so did they leave with the gospel that there was going to be a physical Messiah, a Messiah who was going to break the, the yoke of the Roman Empire over the Jewish nation's neck. They believed it. And there was, it was a place of opposition and fierce dislike for the Romans. So when Jesus came and Judas saw the things like this then, Judas was harboring thoughts that he was going to be a fiscal messiah. And of course, Judas was going to be the finance minister and steal money, corruption, and steal money, corruption. That's who Judas was. So that was the first one. So for him, when Christ said, my kingdom is not of this kingdom, that is a letdown. And how come I've followed this guy all throughout? Judas never called Jesus Lord. He was always master. So the day he found another master, he went. But for me, this is what... So first of all, disappointment. That is uh, uh, wrong expectations. That was one. Number two, Jesus said, the one whose, whose hands meet with mine in the pot, he is going to betray me. Now in Eastern custom, when, the, when they're going to sit down to eat, first of all, the food is given to the tasters, either the court jester or a butler to taste and to make sure that the thing is safe. If the person doesn't die, then the king will go ahead and eat. But normally, the king must take first. He must have the first cut. He must have the choice, uh, choice part. And that's why when growing up, you remember that our parents, I mean, uh, my mother will cook and then load my father's pan or pot with, with it. And I'm like, wow, you're giving everything to him, you know. That's, they have the preeminence. They, they have the first shot. That is why in, in life we have the, in, in buffet dinners, we have the uh, high table. And high tables are allowed to serve themselves first before everybody else. What Judas was saying, that Jesus and I, we are equal. He was, in his mind, Judas, Jesus was not bigger than him. So what he can take, I can also take. At the time he's thinking, I can also take, because I'm also entitled to it. And the third reason, which is also very sinister. Do you remember when the woman poured the alabaster box of, of, of speaking out oil? And the Bible says Judas was incensed. He was, he, he, was, he was angry. And he said, can this alabaster box, and he knew his numbers. Judas is a sharp accountant. He said, can this money be saved and used to feed the poor or something like that? But the Bible said he was not doing it because of concern for the poor. He wanted to lay his hands on it. He wanted to steal it. So Judas Offense, competition, on wrongful expectations, this was what drove Judas. You'd be very surprised. When somebody's going to betray you, look at these three things. 
And the last thing for Judas was profit. He was going to make profit out of it. And that's the reason why people do what they do. That's the reason why people will betray you. Because of this. Sometimes you try to figure it out. But why? But why? Watch these three things. It's in there. Betrayal is a fact of life. Whether we like it or not, it will happen. These are the three things that drive people towards betrayal. See you later. Thank <laughs> you.